Hey guys. Uh, all right. Let's see here. This I think is going to be the Sarah Boone hearing. And will this judge let her know this isn't Burger King? I think that's probably likely. You don't get it the way you want it. Check, 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 check. Check, Eric, check. Can you all confirm Good. that you hear me now? Roger. Over. Perfect. Roger. All right, Judge, you're all set. Let's all right. do it, Judge. For those of you appearing virtually, my apologies. We've been troubleshooting a system problem this morning. It Don't appears even worry about it, bro. that we have now resolved that. Let's go ahead and call up the Boone case. State of Florida versus Sarah Boone, 2020, CF 2603, State. Let's go, Booners. Dave Cacciatore on behalf of the state. Go ahead. Right back, Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you shall give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you back. Yes. Right. Can I have JAC announce themselves as well? Yes, Audrey Moore for JAC. All right. Hey, Audrey. So we have multiple matters scheduled. Uh, this morning, oh, yeah. one of which is Mr. Banquitz's motion to withdraw. My reading of the law is I feel like I have to address that motion first and rule on that before I can address any other motions that would be uh, heard today. So, Mr. Banquitz, I'll start with you. Tell me why you're moving to withdraw. Just the, le the letters that have been coming to your honor, uh, the derogatory berating of my services in this case, uh, I can't effectively represent her. Uh, I, she doesn't trust me. She calls me a, a bud, I think, a buffoon, uh, on and on and on and on. And no one should have to endure that type of uh, derogatory comments and expect to effectively represent someone, especially okay. in a murder case. Ms. Boone, I read your letter dated August 26, 2023, and your letter dated August 30th, 2023. And just so we're clear, I read all of the letters that you send to the court. Whether I respond or not is based on what's in the letter and whether I'm asked to actually do something that's within my purview as a judge or not. If I understand correctly, you have now decided that you think it would be best, in fact, if Mr. Bankowitz was allowed to withdraw. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And you understand by him withdrawing, I'll have to appoint another attorney. Do you understand that? I do. And that attorney is not standing here, so we're not going to be able to address, and I'll give the state a chance to talk to me as well. But assuming I grant this, the Boone platoon is not going to like it. That were docketed for today, which means I'm going to have to reset your case for a later date. Do you understand that? I'm not sure what items it is you're speaking of. I haven't received a copy yet of the letter. What? Uh -huh. So we also were having a hearing today in regards to authorization for payment for an expert that your attorney believes he needs to defend you and the issue about the compensation of that expert, which is why JAC is participating today. I don't know if your next lawyer is gonna think that that expert's the right person to use or whether they're gonna go a different route after consulting with you. And even if they did, they're not standing here. And once Mr. Banquets is out, he's out. He can't Bullseye. argue the motion. So do you understand that? I fully understand. Bullseye. Uh, Mr. Cacciatore, normally the state takes no position in these issues, but there are limited circumstances when the state doesn't take a position. So are you taking a position on this motion to withdraw, Mr. Cacciatore? No, this would be one of those times where we would be not taking a position. This is one right. of those times. So... I'm going to grant Mr. Banquitz's motion to withdraw. I'm going to appoint. Who's the person Attorney I hate the Winston worst? Winston Hobson to represent Ms. Boone. Uh, in regards to the other matters scheduled today, I'm going to take no action on them and, at this time. And now I'm going to read you the riot act. And, well, in regards to the motion involving JAC, I'm simply going to take no action on that motion at this point in time until Mr. Hobson has a chance to review it and determine whether he wants to proceed with that motion. I will address the pretrial because today was also supposed to be pretrial. Here's what we'll do. 
Let me just get my calendar up. I don't think so. Has the attorney been talked to? I think this is the blind side, probably. As far as pretrial conference, I'm going to set this case for pretrial conference on Tuesday, November 28th, and the trial period starting Monday, December 11th. I think any earlier period of time would be unrealistic for Mr. Hobson to get on board. And get they probably won't do this either. Still think it goes to next how year. He wants to in regards if he's got to find a fresh experts. expert and not old, but I will set one. a status hearing on the case. The status prior is whack. To that. The status is what? So yeah, could could a new attorney really get ready and roll this thing in December without using those old nasty recycled experts? I don't know. Sarah wants fresh ones, new ones. The Boone platoon won't be satisfied with anything less. Go Booners. Judge doing some calculations with his fingers there. But I still think a riot act is coming here. At least I've seen that before. And she's not going pro se, but still, I don't know. If they go pro se, that's usually when they get the riot act. I'll set a status hearing on the case Monday, October 30th, 2023 at 10 a.m. That'll be for the purpose of making sure that Mr. Hobson's on board, some sense of where he thinks are things are, uh, how realistic he thinks the November pretrial is, yeah, any exactly. other matters I need to address with him at that time. Kick that baby now, to next Ms. year. Now, Boone, in just a minute, they're going to take you back to the Orange County Jail. I'm going to suggest that you talk to Mr. Hobson about the various other issues you raised in your letter dated August 30th, 2023. One other thing I want to talk to you about, we had this conversation once in the past. Uh -oh. Clearly your working relationship with Mr. Banquets was such that it deteriorated to the point where the two of y'all just couldn't work together to defend your case. So I'm not going to try to referee um, how that played out, why that unfolded the way it did. But one thing I want to caution you about, if this becomes a problem on another court appointed attorney, I'm going to look more closely at what the alleged disputes are. You have a right to a court appointed lawyer. There are certain decisions a defendant gets to make in the defense of their case that are absolutely theirs, such as whether they go to trial or not such as whether they testify or not. But there are many decisions in a case that a lawyer gets to make. And while you certainly have a right to consult with your lawyer and discuss with your lawyer, they don't automatically just do whatever you say. They use their professional judgment and experience and look at the evidence, look at the law, and do the best they can. Also, you've got court-appointed counsels. I've explained to you before Court-appointed counsel rarely have the luxury of representing one person and only having one case to focus on. I have concerns that your expectations of what any court-appointed counsel might do as far as spending time with you and the depth and degree of communication may be unrealistic expectations. You always have the right to retain a lawyer to represent you, and then that's between you and that lawyer. You you can demand whatever expectations that you have as part of that agreement. But when it's a court appointed lawyer, you have to accept and understand that they have other cases, other courtrooms, other responsibilities. And I'm cognizant of that when I'm addressing these types of issues about communication. So that's just food for thought, nothing to do today. I don't need a response from you. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. I don't want to hear you talk. We proceeded forward. So again, the court minutes reflect that I am in court continuing pretrial. I have granted a motion to withdraw. I have appointed Mr. Hobson to 
represent the defendant and I'm taking no action on the motion, the ex parte motion for a uh, cost directed uh, where GAC is responding. Ms. Boone will be returned to the Orange County Jail pending disposition of her case. Wait, she's she not gonna say anything? Say anything? Oh, I, I channeled her because of the letters. That might be it. Kaboom. Uh, Had to have that white Michael Jackson glove bailiff take her out of there. So I think that's it because then it just goes on to other things. Yeah. How about that? So that was uh, that was Boone's hearing there. She didn't she didn't do much talking, did she? So we'll have uh, let's put this up here. How many times can she change lawyers? Is there a limit? Well, I guess that's what his point is. You know, there's not to say some specific limit, but eventually she could wear out the patience of the court. However, do keep in mind that while this will be her seventh lawyer, there are only two lawyers who left because of some interaction with her. The very first lawyer who did most of the work on the case for a long period of time and this lawyer. So this is really be her third, right? The other lawyers left out because of um, professional ethics stuff that dealt with conflicts of interest. They represented somebody adverse in the case or a witness in the case, something like that. So the very first lawyer left due to a conflict with her and then this lawyer. It definitely sounds more fun to say, you know, that she fought, and I'm not saying you're saying this, but you know, to the idea that she fought with um, six or seven lawyers or whatever, but it really, it's only been two. Granted, if she'd spent more time with those other attorneys, because they all left very quickly, it, we, it might very well have reached the same result. And I think that's kind of what the judge is, is hinting at here is he's not going to put up with that, but for so long. Uh, I think she's subconsciously delaying his trial indefinitely. So she's never convicted. Maybe, I mean, um, and that's possible. I don't know exactly what she thinks, but the, maybe my mind's a little bit lower down toward the, the ground of where she's at in terms of I just think that she what she's expecting is to somebody to ride in and gather up a team of experts who will say that she's not responsible for this. And she was trying to tell the police that by saying it wasn't intentional, but what she didn't realize is that she's not charged with intentional murder. She's charged with reckless murder. And second degree, so she's got big problems there. So then she swapped it out to, well, but what if I was a battered uh, partner? And she was complaining in these most recent letters about this attorney trying to use recycled experts. In other words, experts the state has already paid for to examine her. If those experts said, you are a battered partner and I will testify to that at trial, why would she care? So I don't know what these experts have said, but I would assume they, they weren't going to say what she wanted them to say. So she was asking for new experts, which was what her attorney was in the process of trying to achieve. And uh, now that relationship is severed. And Winston will be the riding in on this case now to see what Winston can do. She's already mentally writing her next letter. I, I did see that. I As the judge was saying things, I saw her computing various numbers of hours. This added on more to that. And she's got... Um, a rain person like a devotion to reciting statistics and lecturing the court, but she didn't do a lot of lecturing in there today. She watched the OJ series on Netflix and expected Johnny Cochran, F. Lee Bailey to come to her rescue. Yeah. I mean, I, I do kind of feel like she thinks that, that she, I think she thinks that she's not responsible. It was an accident. How can this be happening to her? And she wants someone to stop it from happening, but Johnny's not around to do that for her. And uh, thanks to Marshall Lynn seeing you on the second stream for today. And I really appreciate it. I'd pay to see it. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised some of these courts don't have a subscription-based service. Uh, I read all the letters you wrote. Yeah, uh, you know, he's looking at them, but what's he supposed to do? And, and her most recent letters basically told the court he needs to start vetting these attorneys for her and watching over what the attorneys do. And he made it pretty clear to her. I'm not doing that. You want your own attorney Burger King style, uh, do it yourself. You're going to get a public defender and they have other cases. And if there's a conflict in the future, I'm going to look more closely at it. He didn't say I'm going to prejudge it. He said, I'm going to look more closely at it. And that seems fair. So, uh, yeah, 
Uh, hang on one second here. Just give me one second. Just trust me on this. Uh, hold on. I was looking at this person here. Here we go. Criminal defense and DUI attorney. Hobson Law Firm. I'm going to make sure this is the right person before I... And it's a different Hobson. Maybe related. Hmm. About us. Meet Joe. I don't know if that's the same person or not, so I won't I won't put them up there. I was looking to see who this person is. Ah, uh, there's Winston, but telephone numbers and things, I don't want to pop that up there. So I'll leave it alone. I just wanted to see who what she was getting as a, as an attorney. And no uh, indication from her that she wants to go pro se, of course. No, that that was it. She was uh, escorted out, and I don't think she's coming back from that. Do I agree that he uh, Bankowitz didn't do some of these issues by taking too many cases, limiting his ability to service his client? I don't. I don't know the answer to that, and so I wouldn't want to speculate one way or the other. I do think um, they haven't gotten along for a long time. He asked to get out of this case in December. And maybe she should have supported that and she would have had Winston earlier. And, you know, hey, we'll see, right? Because if she gets Winston, maybe she'll write a thank you card to the judge and say, now this is the bullseye. I love Winston. Can't wait to go to trial with Winston. This is all I ever wanted in an attorney. And then uh, everybody can will have this happy Disney-esque ending. She better call Saul. <laughs> yeah, and It might be who she wants, I think. A good, a good suggestion, life coaching suggestion. So anyway, that's uh, what I know about that. And so we got off the other stream with the news from Shell saying that this had occurred. And sure enough, it had and uh, found it, watched it. It wasn't everything I ever hoped it could be, but it was more because I thought maybe they just wouldn't show it at all since it had the motion withdrawal on it. And of course, they didn't get into too many details and, and that's fine. And the judge telling her, you know, Tighten it up. It's not going to be everything you want it to be. And she's overplayed her hand with the judge for sure in her letters. You can see uh, he's a little skeptical of her viewpoint on what she deserves. Anyway, that's it. And uh, again, see some of you guys at noon, hopefully, or all or more or whatever. And I don't know what we're going to talk about there yet, but it will probably aggravate many people. And uh, well, that's it. Have a good weekend in any event. Thanks. Bye. Bye.